like everything and every person has a story behind them. There's a story behind Thai Buddha. And I think it started with a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. Rosa Parks had a dream. Josiah Henson had a dream. Marianne Chai had a dream. I had a dream. We've all had dreams. And I think in many ways, sometimes, most of those dreams, the majority of dreams, don't always materialize. But sometimes, on occasion, sometimes just on rare occasions, those dreams do materialize. And I think the dream of Taibu had a plan attached to it. And attached to the plan were committed and passionate. And together, the plan and the passion and the perseverance of those people behind it were able to get to where we are today. Here was a group of people who was committed and dedicated and plugged into the community and wanted to see this happen. And so the, the great times was people who, was, who wanted to work together, it was proactive and pushing the agenda forward. But the other thing was that the people in the community um, began to be excited about the possibilities of the health center. And so they came on board. And so when we had the engagement um, sessions where we had meetings within the community, people came out in huge numbers to participate because they too wanted to see this as a, as a reality in their community. Things were just coming together. I think the, the arguments and the need was there and it was time. The time was right to do <laughs> the right thing. So just let everybody know what a great thing it is that can happen to people when they put their minds together. And even if you disagree the ultimate vision and goal, you have some agreement there, knowing the end result is going to have a great impact on, on people's lives. So I would like to see people move forward the idea, never losing sight of the concept never losing sight of what the struggle was to get there and to sh ensure that it is maintained with all the cultural competence that we will need to carry this forward to make it truly a health service for black people. We are in good health and we are indeed on our way somewhere. Because we are Taibu, we are Taibu because we are an issue of an ancestry who have authored a legacy by our deeds and declarations. We have caused this community, this city, this province to pause and ponder what manner of people are doing. We have caused, we are the product of suffering and sacrifice. We are those who like silver must be captured as stirring. We are wise and watchful as we weigh the past against the present. Our capabilities are diverse, our qualifications are excellent, and we are motivated by the heartbeat of our struggle. Who are we? We are the thinkers and the doers. Who are we? We are Reverend Donald Butler and Dr. Christopher Morgan. Who are we? We are Unity Johnson and Dr. Dominic Shelton. Who are we? We are Carla Avis Birch and Odette James. Who are we? We are Dr. Neil Fernando. Who are we? We are Hyacinth Robinson Powell and Derek McClennan. Who are we? We are Gail Wilson, Elaine Thompson, and Dan Tambesa. Who are we? We are Lieben Bieber Mikael and Donna Fancy Lai and Tony Jodo Baptiste. Who are we? We are Althea Telemac and Delphine Blas. Who are we? We are Stella Williams, Sean Douglas, Mindy, VJ, Sarah Van Amtun. We who are we? We are Maheshi. We are I, we are Patrick, we are Audrey Dye, we are Anne Jacob. Who are we? We are Tamika Shaw. Who are we? We are Raquel Hammond. Who are we? We are Nancy and Adir Nadira. Who are we? We are Mira, we are Keith, we are Helen. Who are we? We are Jason, we are Mina, and we are Ulysses. Who are we? We are DeWitt. Who are we? We are Miss Lily Johnson. Who are we? We are Marianne Chambers and Bas Balkasu. Who are we? We are the thinkers and to do and the doers. Who are we? We are today's choice and today's challenge. Who are we? We are Tai Lu. See us, know us, understand us for our storage.
I think it's great that there's a building here and I think it's a central point and a hub that you know programs can be offered through here. I think definitely our nurse practitioners can actually be able to um, do exams and be able to treat people. We have a very, very um, committed staff members who are working very hard in engaging communities in assessing needs, in meeting needs of the people. And so we have quite done quite, um, achieved quite a lot so far. Uh, we have programs related to early years, for example, um, parents for prog for parents um, program for parents. Uh, we have a child minding training program that uh, takes uh, about 25 participants who um, have the opportunity to enhance their skills, uh, create their opportunities for uh, further education or employment. Um, we have uh, youth programs, very creative and unique youth programs, the Liberated Mind that engages uh, young black men in some very serious and um, uh, significant discussions about their situation and how they need to address those situations. It is a very empowering group. For youth, for example, one of my personal highlight programs is a program called Liberated Minds. It's a program for young black men between the ages of 14 and 25. So basically we meet once every Friday. The time is on Fridays between 4 and 6. And what the focus is, is to talk about the issues and challenges and the barriers that black men face every day. We cover everything that you can think of. Um, we have early years programs. Later on in the tour, you will meet the health promoter to talk about the early years programs for young children. Uh, hi, my name is Min. I'm the health promoter. I work at the Taipu Community Hospital. My major role is to do outreach and I conduct the community needs assessment, then design, develop, and deliver the program. So the major program I'm working on are uh, early years program, one year program, and the community uh, child demanding training program. So our earliest program is provide service to parents who have young children, zero to six year old. We run program in partnership with different agencies like Toronto Public Health, East Link Discovery, uh, a lot of agencies. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a lot of partners here. And uh, another um, program, very a successful program is our child mandate training program. We provide a community-based uh, community skill training program and uh, they will finish 12 sessions of lectures and 20 hours placement CPR training. Then after six months program they will get their certificate. We call community trained certificate. So with this certificate they can try to find a part-time job in the community or open their home daycare or continue to continue their education at college. So so far the population that we're generally working with, my youngest client is seven, oldest right now is about 77. So we don't really have a cutoff in terms of age. Um, referral process, some people come self-referred, some people come from other um, agencies. We also get a lot of people um, bringing bringing clients to us from other agencies like social services, um, like uh, uh, Starboard Boys and Girls Club. So we do really connect with a lot of the places in, or, in and around the community. Um, I generally deal with depression. Um, those that are coming with more complex mental health issues, I'll maybe do the initial assessment and then refer them out to what might be more suited for them. But I do do one-to-one -one counseling for family issues, marital issues, conflict resolution, anything that, that people are coming in with. I have a lot of clients that are also dealing with trauma and we do some trauma counseling as well. Actually, we function very much the, the way a family doctor does. Okay, we're able to see our patients, examine them, make a diagnosis. We can order tests for them. We can prescribe medication. Okay. We are, however, our, our um, scope of practice is really geared to the well person who is here for a cold or because they need a pap test or that kind of thing. If we encounter a patient with a very complex or life-threatening disease, we do involve the physicians in their care. So they get as well as that, I'm also involved in the community. I um, go to programs with some of the community health workers and talk to patients about their health care needs, how to problem solve situations. We're providing uh, services to children under the age of 18 and seniors over 65. Dr. Wong is here, she's one of our dental Hi. managers. And so uh, we have two operatories here and we're providing free services for dental examinations, x-rays, uh, fillings, extractions, some denture work for seniors, some root canal work, 
um, everything is based on income eligibility and they must live in the city of Toronto. We have a seniors yoga program which we call the gentle exercise program. Um, again targeting at uh, the, the black seniors and racialized seniors. Um, we, we have now either to split the group because the numbers are, uh, we can't hold the numbers in, in one particular space. Uh, you know, we get about 40 seniors coming on a weekly basis to attend the gentle exercise program. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's raining on that day, if it's snowing on that day, or if it's very cold they come. space has been designed for them. Our seniors come to their gentle, gentle exercise programs without fail, be it rain, snow or sunshine. Our health promotion groups are always fully packed. Clients are giving us feedback that they are seeing improvements in their physical and social health. And so this is very encouraging and I think there is much more to be done. My name is Clarice. I enjoy the program. It is so good. I enjoy it because I get exercise, we can discuss things that you, normally if you sit at home you have no one to discuss. It's the greatest thing that the government is doing and I enjoy it so much. Thank you. My name is Margaret and uh, I enjoy coming to Taibo because and I was introduced to, the, introduced to the program by my friend Clarice. And, um, I enjoy the program because there is a time of discussion and uh, also the, where I enjoy the, the sessions with the health nurse coming in and explain about different topics. Um, also the exercise program is very helpful to me and uh, I also have to say a big thank you to Estella and uh, she's a very encouraging person and I appreciate the program and I thank Taibo for this here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Agnes. I am grateful to Taibu for providing us ladies this program. It is wonderful to, to meet and socialize with so many young ladies, beautiful ladies, and we always have some interesting topics. We have nurses come in and give us um, pointers on how we can lead our lives 
and we are very grateful for that and hope to see more. My name is Linda and I'm a retired nurse and I like the program very much. It's very helpful to get out of the house and, and you know, do something different other than to do it from the TV or doing something else. It helps a lot, as I said, to get out of the house and do, interact with different people. As you can see, we all have different nationalities and we can interact and talk. And Estelle's very good. She has different programs that she engages into, exercises, and which is very good. So, thank you to Taibo. They're very good and I'm hoping the class continues. Wherever, so we present that we all are enjoying it. So thanks to Taibo and what he's doing for the community. My name is Kunambra, and I've been coming to this program ever since it was on. I love it because I meet all kinds of people. I learn from them, and I love Bollywood dancing, soccer dance, and exercise. My main thing is to see people to talk to people, to laugh with people. It takes away my depression and loneliness. I just feel so good. My name is Sarvan Singh. I come to the program when it starts. I really like it. I meet most of the friends over here. We talk about our problems and you know, we get together and you know, at home you are alone and you come here and you talk so many things you learn from them and I love the program they do the soca class, I like it we do the exercise, everything and get together and solve our problems I love the program The stage is in front of us Time to get advantageous Stamp on it, stamp on it, stamp on it, stamp on it Tramp on it, tramp on it, tramp on it, tramp on it Tramp on it, tramp on it, tramp on it, tramp on it
for inviting me, but also for organizing uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, summit. Uh, it really is critically important for us to try and focus uh, our attention to uh, issues of uh, commercialization in health, uh, and particularly <coughs> uh, to uh, address issues of uh, concern for the black community. This is not just about the black community, but I think the black community is a really important uh, area of focus so when it comes to uh, the uh, issues of racialization and health. One of the questions I believe we have to ask ourselves is then why do anything at all about health disparities? Why do anything at all in terms of looking at race and how it impacts health? And primarily, Ali, for one, is this idea of policy equity, social justice. You know, if you deal with health disparities, if we can look at race, we know we can actually close some of these health gaps. So what is the whole idea of equity? The other talks about this idea, which comes from which makes business sense in terms of human capital, right? Like my colleague mentioned earlier in this presentation, um, the more education, the longer life you live, the healthier you can actually be. So from a business standpoint, it makes sense to look at addressing health disparities I think Taibu will continue to become uh, recognized as a, as, a, as, a, as a player, as a major partner and stakeholder in the health sector. Um, I think it will become innovative in terms of the programs that it's going to develop that are going to help serve the community, the Malvern community broadly and the, the, the population of, from people of uh, uh, African descent specifically. I think there'll be um, research that's going to come out of it, uh, programs that are, that are going to, there are going to be networks that are going to be made and partnerships that are going to be made so that uh, other institutions will look to Taibu as, 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 as an example, as a model, as, as a reference, uh, as an expert, uh, uh, as a center of excellence. So to see Taibu as a, recognized as a space um, where great health care is provided, but not just health care, care that, um, and services that wrap around the individual, and the individual being marginalized, um, disenfranchised, um, people of color from around, from around not only the Malvern area, but others that may be in proximity and can come there and get the services. But also that um, people turn to Taibu for advice, um, for leadership, for information, and in many cases, the evidence, right? Because they'll have a longer mm -hmm. history of providing services to this to these populations. And so the evidence that will justify more of similar types of services. So doing also some of the research pieces um, that are necessary, and not necessarily just being the one to do the research, but also um, exercising leadership around it, participating in it, you know, um, seeing the need for it, for it and making it happen. Um, because I think that, you know, even for the existence of Taibu, part of what made that possible was also showing that, you know what, we're disproportionately, you know, impacted by certain health conditions. We are disproportionately impacted by poverty. So having that kind of information helped to make Taibu a reality. I was, you know, very enthusiastic about jumping on board to uh, be part of this process. So, um, you know, I, I certainly in, envisioned um, uh, an institution that would provide uh, services for the black community because of, you know, some of the unique healthcare needs that we have. So whether it be certain diseases that we are, uh, you know, disproportionately burdened with the illness of, of certain illnesses um, like hypertension, diabetes, Research is going to be another big area for Taibu as we move forward. We already have a very good relationship with academic institutions. Uh, we are running or partnering with York University at the moment in uh, developing a, a diabetes research project, uh, which is also another successful project uh, that uh, I'm uh, very pleased and proud to, to mention that the staff have worked very hard around that. Um, but research is going to be key to inform us of, of uh, what the needs are out there. The purpose of today's session is to get a sense of what you know about diabetes, right? And also to assess your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So by the end of the session, everyone in here will know whether they're at high risk or at low risk for developing the disease, and you'll also know um, 
what you can do to prevent it. Okay? We're from the Caribbean community. We're um, Vincentian background. And basically, uh, we found out about this through our cousin. And um, she's been coming with her mom for a, probably a few months before we did. And a lot of it was word of mouth. And that's always the best way to recruit people. Um, we've told probably about 100 people. And as you can see from the gym, <laughs> at least half of them have shown up. Um, it's really an amazing experience. And we're really enjoying it. We've been coming for how long about? Uh, about a year, a year now yeah. and uh, they've uh, my parents are both diabetic so they haven't done the screening in part um, and I am not um, pre-diabetic so I um, haven't gotten tested in that but a lot of people have also used that resource um, a resource that they wouldn't have used otherwise um, so we've been enjoying it um, my father's enjoying it he's um, retired both my parents and um, with their health and with their age Exercise is always good and with past surgeries and everything it's been really helpful Getting the heart rate up and just getting healthy and it's not just exercise. It's for the mind body and soul It works on community relationships. We, we exchange resources. We build relationships. We build friendships and it's, it's a lifelong um, event and I'm really thankful and blessed to be a part of it We have um, been our sugars have been quite stable um, because of the exercises that we're doing and um, we're getting really good results. I've lost a few pounds and I'm hoping to lose more and um, it's all due to type 1 and so precise and I thank them very much. I think you know part of the challenge now for Taibu is to find the right complement of people to work in Taibu. Um, people that believe in, in you know the mandate, the vision that, that the founders believed in, and to now carry that through. I want to say to all of you that the only way you can take back your neighborhood and create something is you have to empower yourself. Don't, don't wait for somebody else to do it. So Chris, I want to thank you and your board, the Black Health Alliance, for your dedication, your commitment, and your vision and you stayed with it till it was delivered. Not many people stick around that long. So I give you credit for it and I give your entire board for, for doing that work. <laughs> to Floyd Eden and her new board for uh, operating this facility, you have many challenges in front of you, but I, I think I see a bunch of people that are well prepared to do it. I want to say to you on behalf of my good friend here, stand up again. <laughs> He's wearing the right color. <laughs> the board has made a perfect choice in an ED. I have to tell you, I have to say to all of you that have done the work, I don't deserve any credit. I was just your agent and I enjoyed working on your behalf because when you have people that carry the torch and be that torchbearer, it makes my job easy. My job is to open the door you can't get open. And I think we've succeeded in doing that. And I want to thank my colleague who uh, was at the announcement in the mall that isn't here because she was the champion of this particular community health center. And that's the Honorable Marianne Chambers, who became a close friend. And you know, most of the time, during the middle of circle, we turn around and shake everybody's hand, and we say, peace be unto you. How about we turn and we all shake each other's hand, and we say, Taibu. <laughs> and I want you to start that from now on, when you greet your friends in Malvern. I want you to greet them with Taibu. Because that's where... I want you to greet your friends in Malvern with that word from today. We're going to change things. Because if we shake each other's hand and we say Taibu, we're encouraging people to be in good health. So, great choice of word for the center. I want to thank all of you for being part of something good. And it's not a grand opening. It was a celebration. So the drummers coming in is perfect. Ladies and gentlemen.